Hi guys, good evening, and welcome back once again to The Edward. I'm your host, Eddie, and in tonight's video, I will be discussing my review and recap for episode four of season one of AMC's Fear the Walking Dead. Now, before I go on, of course, uh, let it be warned that this review, like all my review videos, will be full of big, big spoilers. So if you're not caught up on The Walking Dead, the most recent episode, or a couple of episodes, do not watch or continue listening to this video as I will be discussing big spoilers. You have been warned. Oh, and uh, first off, uh, I'd like to give a big shout out and a congratulations to the cast and crew on Game, on Game of Thrones for winning Best TV Series of the Year or Best Drama Series of the Year. So congratulations, Game of Thrones. Uh, and uh, happy birthday to George R. R. Martin. So uh, you guys are doing great. Fun show. Uh, keep up the good work. And uh, looking forward to next season. So thank you guys. Uh, sorry, I just wanted to do that little shout out there. Uh, moving on. So this was a very, very interesting episode. Uh, I know it kind of threw some people off. It threw me off for a little bit. But then it became pretty clear what was going on. The National Guard has taken over... Uh, our main character's neighborhood, and they've set up this temporary fence uh, six miles wide all over the neighborhood, and they've basically sectioned themselves off from the rest of the city. And there's been a time jump, apparently. Chris is making some kind of video diary. He's been t he's talking to the camera about what's been happening, and it's been nine days since the power went out, and I believe that also is meant that it's been nine days uh, since... The last episode since last week's episode so there's been a bit of a time jump and all these people are now in this neighborhood that's currently being occupied by the national guard and they call it a it's a designated safe zone but this whole episode it feels like the complete opposite of safe zone you know those old feelings uh you know those old reminiscent feelings that like the first time you saw Woodbury going way back in season three of The Walking Dead when Andrea Michonne first go to Woodbury and were introduced to the governor the reappearance of Merle and just the town itself this episode reminded me of that episode when the governor was first introduced because the commanding officer of this National Guard unit it's not acting like a professional soldier. In fact, he's acting more like a man who's desperately trying to cling on to something that is not really his, but he wants it to be his. And he must think like he probably thinks he's doing his job, but he's doing it his own way, not the way that goes by the book. And I have a bad feeling that this isn't a safe zone. This is more like a military occupation. And that's exactly how the old man, Daniel, uh, tells, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, tells uh, uh, Madison about it. Uh, he tells her, you know, he tells her like, a, he tells her the old story of when he was a little boy and soldiers came to his village and took a bunch of people away. And then he found all those people dead in the river nearby days later. It's like, you know, it's a military occupation. And several people have disappeared or just gone. And the National Guard claims it's because uh, they've been taken to their VA hospital or their military hospital, which is outside the fence. And there are all these rules. There's rationing amongst food and medical supplies. And speaking of medical supplies, to make matters worse, Trav uh, Travis, <laughs> Nick, the junkie, uh, the junkie with the killer abs <laughs> is uh, making life difficult for everybody around him because he's going through this constant withdrawal. So he constantly has to have some kind of drug in his system. And there's this scene where he actually takes this man's morphine and drips it into his body and like lies under his bed. He's like, Ugh, you know, getting a big kick out of this morphine. And the poor old man above him is the one who actually needs the morphine because, you know, he's the one who's in a serious, serious pain. And Liza, Travis's ex-wife, um, who was going to nursing school before all of this happened, has been happening, has been acting as like a civilian nurse, so to speak. Like she's been taking care of some of the more terminally ill people with the commander's approval. And she's helped... Uh, I think keep uh, balance and health in this little uh, in this uh, little uh, gated community, so to speak. And uh, Ophelia has uh, formed some kind of relationship with one of the younger officers. And uh, first, you think you know it's pretty clear that this relationship most likely happened because she just wants access 
uh, more than anyone to the medicine to help her mother, who of course has the infected foot, which most likely will have to be chopped off at some point because it's getting worse. It looks like it's getting worse. But uh, at the same time, this younger guy, this officer she's hooked up with, seems to be well aware of that, of what her true intentions are. And he doesn't seem to be too bothered by it because he seems to genuinely like her and care about her. So he's not such of a, a douchebag as his regular commanding officer. And then Travis is like the civilian liaison. Like he's he's like uh he's like the unofficial head of the neighborhood and that's why the commander asked him to talk some sense into this guy, this one of his neighbors who refuses to get screened on medical screening. His family's scared for him. They don't know what's going on with him. And this guy's just flat out terrified of the entire situation. Travis manages to calmly talk him out of coming out of hiding in his bedroom and get some medical screening. And at first he's like, okay, well, that's resolved. But then all of a sudden, this guy's disappeared. Doug uh, has disappeared. And according to the military, the National Guard commander, they say that uh, they had to take him off base for medical reasons or uh, they just had to take him elsewhere like he's simply gone and I have a really really bad feeling and a theory about this I think the National Guard or at least this kooky commander is eliminating all of the problem ones and what I mean by problem ones is all the people who could create problems and stir up trouble for him in this new community that he has control over or that he has command over. You know, he's got all these men under his command and he has all these people he's got to deal with. And uh, he does he just does he just doesn't seem to be very handling it very professionally. Like he's hitting golf balls into the abandoned street, very, very reminiscent of what the governor was doing when we were first introduced to him. He's hitting golf balls over the walls of Woodbury into the abandoned dead world, and that's exactly what this commander is doing. When Travis goes to confront him about, hey, what happened to Doug? Where's my neighbor? Where's my friend? And, you know, he kind of shrugs him off. He's like, you know, you don't need to keep asking me about this. He's fine. It's like, ugh, creepy. And another thing they have to bring up, Chris notices while he's doing his little video vlog, he notices this SOS pattern happening from a house way beyond the gated uh, neighborhood. And it's like somebody's using a mirror or light reflections to send out SOS, help, help, help. And he tells his dad about it. His dad doesn't believe him. He tells Madison about it. She doesn't really believe him either until she looks at the tape and she does see it. She thinks she sees it and that leads her to venture outside of the fence. She's walking around and she sees something disturbing. I mean, the whole scene is disturbing to her, like abandoned cars, burnt out homes and businesses and bodies, walkers and humans, humans who have been gunned down in the head. And then she hides from a passing biohazard military unit or convoy she hides from them and then she goes back to the community and tells travis what she saw and she brings up the point that the dead humans she saw uh were shot down were killed and they're wondering why they're killing people you know they understand why they're killing the walkers or the sick people but they're killing people in her own words looked perfectly healthy so what's the deal with that and what's even more disturbing is that towards the end of this episode um, right when uh, Mrs. Salazar and Nick are both taken, removed from the gated community, and uh, according to the the National Guard's doctor who has recruited Liza to help her, they're going to take them both to a nearby military hospital for further treatment since Mrs. Salazar desperately needs it. And uh, Nick seems to be uh, po seems to pose a problem regarding medical supplies because he keeps depleting the medical supplies by getting high off of all of it. And the commander probably realizes this or realizes what kind of a risk he poses, and that's probably why they have him removed. And there's this scene, great scene between our main characters and the National Guardsmen where they're removing Mrs. Salazar, and Mr. Salazar wants to go with her, but they refuse. And then they forcibly remove Nick and take him away. You know, it's the classic military versus the civilian scenario. It's a very tense scene, very tension-filled. And, uh, you know, they take them both away and Liza seems to go with them because she wants to know what's happening to her friends, to Mrs. Salazar and to Nick. And it also kind of hurts her because she has to say goodbye to her own son whom she waves 
you know, through the window and she leaves with this doctor to go to this military hospital. But towards the end of this episode, after Travis and Madison have this weird argument where Madison gets angry with him blaming Liza, his ex-wife, that this is all her fault that her son was taken away, which I don't think is entirely true. I think she's just looking for somebody to blame all of her anger and frustration on because she and Travis are really start to hit their breaking points in this episode. Like Madison loses her cool with her son and she physically beats him and strikes him a few times for looting the medicine cabinet of their dead neighbor. And, uh, you know, she's drinking coffee mugs of what looks like whiskey or some kind of liquor. And then she blames Travis's ex-wife for, uh, like, ruining everything. And Travis is like, how, how is this her fault or my fault? And, I, and you know, they, they both, you know, have their little uh, alone scenes where they both cry a little bit, especially Madison. But when Travis is on the roof of their house and he, see, and he thinks he sees the SOS signals coming from the house that Chris and Madison saw... It's actually gunfire, and they can hear gunfire and yelling. So somebody's getting killed up there. Somebody's under attack, or they're killing something or somebody. But uh, I wonder if when Travis told the military commander about the SOS signal they saw from the house up on the hill, if he secretly sent his National Guardsmen to kill whoever was in that house for whatever reason. Or maybe they w went to go rescue whoever was in that house, and they found them dead. They had turned and they were a walker or there were walkers already in there and the person who was sending the SOS signals was already dead. We probably will never know. But that person, whether they were a walker or a human, was killed by the National Guard in that house. And it startles Travis. It scares him. So now our characters have been separated from each other. Everybody's left in the gated community while Nick, Liza, and Mrs. Salazar are taken to this secretive military hospital if there even is one i'm afraid that the national guard is executing these problems or these the problem ones you know like they're getting rid they're eliminating all the people who could stir up trouble or pose a risk or a threat to the commander's position or to his men so you know so much for being a safe zone i think this is more like a military occupation and i kind of agree with what daniel the old man was saying when he was talking to kim about it like keep your son close keep your family close but this is more of a military occupation and he recognizes the scenario from his youth and I think he's 100% right. I think this is more of a military occupation. Now, what happens in the next episode, whether or not we're going to see a re the, if the military hospital is real and what happens to Mrs. Salazar, Liza, and Nick, and the rest of our characters, we'll just have to wait and see. But overall, very good episode. Very much enjoyed it. It was interesting seeing how people are... are it, it, what's so great about this show is seeing people constantly struggling to always be adapting and surviving in the moment and learning day by day about what to do and what not to do in this new world. And I think that's one of the appealing things of this show is that as the viewers, we know what you should and shouldn't do in the zombie apocalypse. But what makes this show entertaining is that these people have no freaking idea. So thank you very much, you guys, for tuning in here on The Edward for all of your episode review and recap means. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Fear the Walking Dead as much as I did. Please like this video video comment and subscribe sound off down below what did you think of the most recent episode what were your favorite parts do you think that national guard commanders or uh, do you think that there's something else going on are they executing people and secretly taking them away and why please leave your thoughts and opinions and your feedback down below let's be respectful and civil of one another's opinions and beliefs of course and uh thanks for tuning in here on the edward stay subscribed for more upcoming content and videos and of course have a wonderful rest of the evening and until next time fear the walking dead